I'm from, I teach in Stockton. I teach at the Stockton Adult School, but I actually live about 50 miles away. So this is a picture of my commute that I have every morning. <laughs> and one morning back in March, the, the project was really, I felt like it was kind of spinning out of control a little bit. And on the radio, uh, I was listening to NPR, and a report came on about intelligent design or, revo or evolution. You know, you've probably heard about this. It's going on in Kansas, you know. And intelligent design is this idea that, that there's a mind, sort of a universal mind, behind all the complexity of nature, you know. So I kind of was thinking about that and looking at this and thinking, wow, maybe there is a, a mind behind all this. Maybe it's not just random. And then my project was in the back of my mind, and I kind of asked myself, has there been any intelligent design on my project? <laughs> or is it just random events sort of spinning out of control? And so I have control issues too, just like everybody else, I think. And, but this project was really about my, my mentees, so I'd like to go ahead and just kind of introduce them to you right now. Um, my first mentee, and the, um, she's a volunteer, actually. Or she's, she's a full-time teacher, but she volunteered for this, is Sylvia Rambach. And she's been a teacher since 1976. She's uh, had two stints in the, in the Peace Corps. The second time, they actually called her up and invited her back, begged her to come back. So she's taught all ESL levels. She's taught the community, co community college. She uh, began using computers in the 1980s. So she's not really a novice computer user. And she's been through the ITAP program with Linda. You know, we've gone through PowerPoint and all that. So she knows a lot. Of, she knows a lot. But, and she's teaching this year, she's teaching ESL beginning high, what we call level three. So. And she's a, she's a wonderful lady. She's about two years away from retirement, she says. I, I have a doubt about that. But she says she's about two years away from retirement. And she still has a lot of energy. She's not phoning it in. You know, she's still competitive. She still you know, wants to get in there all the time and try new things. And she's very strong-minded and strong-willed. So it's kind of fun to work with her. And so since she's so strong-minded and strong-willed, I decided I need so somebody to push around. So I got this guy. <laughs> he's been a teacher for 15 years, but he's only been one year in ESL. And he's, he, when he started in September, he was very inexperienced. He really knew nothing about teaching ESL. And that was one of the reasons that I decided to kind of force him to do this. <laughs> he's not a volunteer. He's a conscript. And, uh, <laughs> And he has no experience with computers. Uh, his wife didn't want him to get on the internet for some reason. <laughs> so he's never bought a computer. <laughs> and he, he bought his first computer in March. And he bought a Mac. So then before that, he had nothing. Had never taught a computer lesson. Really didn't even know that, that it really existed as a, as a pedagogical tool or an instructional tool. And he's teaching ESL beginning literacy. Okay. And so I called this mixed model computer integration experiment. The rationale being, if you have a very modest little project, give it a big title. Give it, go, go big here. So that's kind of what this is. <laughs> and it's mixed because I've got, you know, I have a, a lady who's very experienced and somebody who's very inexperienced. I've got somebody who's um, a volunteer and somebody who's not a volunteer. So there's just a good, interesting combination of, of mentees. The project goal, the overarching project goal, was just to sort of advance technology integration in the ESL program at our school. That was the overarching goal. That was what we were truly try trying to do. And we were hoping with the individual projects just to sort of take it a step further each, well, this year. Sylvia's project. And I sat down with Sylvia at one point, and we, this is, again, Sylvia is very strong-minded, and this is what she wanted to do. And uh, I made some suggestions, and she swatted them away. <laughs> and, but this is what she wanted to do, teach basic computer skills which is actually a very good idea because I've taught level three also and, and when you, they are much more comfortable when they really have some basic skills under their belt before they go, before you try some real integration, you know. And she wanted to use um, the computer to enhance her EL civics lessons. And what she finally ended up doing was a little, a PowerPoint about their job uh, as part of an EL civics employment unit. Okay. Oh, my role as mentor is kind of a psychiatrist, a psychologist, kind of listener, just a listener, you know. We met very, we met very informally. We didn't, uh, we didn't have a lot of set meeting times except for what was set quickly. I'd say on a Wednesday afternoon, hey, can we meet on Friday for half an hour, that kind of thing. And that's just the way it has to be with Sylvia. And I was also her cheerleader, you know. She, when she was teaching the basic skills component, she was really, she was taking them, taking her class down to an empty computer room that we 
that happens to be empty on Friday afternoon. She was doing it from 2 o'clock to 3.15 on Friday afternoon, and she would come out of there and she would be exhausted. I mean, it was just the end of the week, and, and she was just tired, so I would always try to give her encouragement and let her know she was doing a good job. Tried to be something of a resource person for her, and also a troubleshooter. She was having mechanical problems, and I would try to, try to help her solve some of that stuff. Problems with emails, that thing, that thing. So this is kind of what it looked like in Sylvia's classroom in the beginning. This is, I think, her very first uh, time actually teaching a whole class, trying to teach sort of basic computer skills. You there, Sylvia? You have an address there? Oh, okay. Let me see. Oh, very good. Ellie, you got, what do you have here? Address? What else? Hi, yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, you should have at least an address, color, right? You didn't save anything off because the last time you, you didn't know what to do, right? You were you. Okay, are you ready for the next step? Hello? Did you open up your colors? Hello, hello? Is everybody ready? We are going to start a new page. How do you how do you how do you have a new page? How do you make a new page? Who who remembers? Well, you know that really when you were actually there in person, it didn't really didn't seem that bad. And but when <laughs> Sylvia <laughs> when Sylvia saw the video, she was horrified. You know, she and and like I said, she was coming out of these sessions and she was just tired. She was just exhausted, and because she was speaking, you know, at the top of her voice and running back and forth and trying to get people's attention. So. We talked about it, and she actually figured out what she thinks is the solution. I think it is pretty good. She would do her, all her presentational stuff in the classroom first, and then they would just come to the computer room to practice. So later on, it got, after she was just presenting everything and telling them what to do in her own classroom, she would bring them to com the computer lab, and it would look a little bit like this. And it was for the, for the Sylvia, what are they doing right now? Uh, right now, they're trying to uh, write the sentences for their PowerPoint for the job. Okay. okay. And then password student. Okay, what happened to you, Nate? Why did you turn off your machine? Did you do something? So anyway, so she figured that out on her own. I was kind of proud of her for that. But that's what, when you have an experienced ESL teacher, they can kind of figure out, they can look at something and say, no, we need to do something different. This is a student presentation. I'm going to skip that right now because it's, it's really, this is a student presentation of the, um, the EL Civics lesson, or the EL Civics PowerPoint on employment. But here's some of the stu her students responding to, the, to what she's done. And your name is? Luis. Luis. Okay. Um, have you ever used computers before? Yeah. Do you have one at home? Yeah. Okay. Um, how long have you used computers? Ten, ten, ten years. Three years? Ten years. Ten, ten years. years. In my country, You're I am... an expert. In my country, I am a civil engineer. Oh. So you use computers for your job? Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. Did you enjoy this activity that you did yeah. in here? What did you enjoy about the activity? Um, uh, I like uh, use the PowerPoint and write uh, and use um, word mm -hmm. word processing. Mm -hmm. um, what did you enjoy about the activity? Um, uh, English. Oh, but I liked it. Good. Um, is there anything about using computers that you don't like? I like. You like it all? Yes, all. Okay. Yes. Um, was this easy or difficult using the computer? The first is, is difficult, but uh, when I work more, it's easy for me. Good. Okay. Oh, I missed a slide here. Oh, and this is what Sylvia thought of the project. These are Sylvia's responses. And I, I particularly like this one at the bottom because it's so much like Sylvia. <laughs> For the students, it's better than nothing. <laughs> and actually, from Sylvia, I don't know if Linda me, might remember. For her, that's pretty high praise, you know. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so. But it was a good, she said it was a good learning experience, and open enrollment was frustrating, and that's frustrating for everybody, you know. By the time she got through, by the time she was ready to do her PowerPoint, half her class had turned over, and she had to go back and teach basic stuff, so. Uh, this is Ray's project. Uh, one or three computer classroom project, and Linda Boise really came up with the idea for this, and I really appreciate that. She's, and um, he actually has three computers in his classroom, but it was great that he did this because he, because one, the one computer classroom model is really, I think, the future at our school because most of the time there's not going to be opportunities to take students as a group down to a computer lab or a computer room. We just don't have that. We have a computer, an ESL computer lab, but it's a designated class. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a special, it's a class that meets every day. It's the same students. They do Oxford Picture Dictionary and Ellis and that kind of thing. So if you want to integrate computers in our, in our school, you're going to have to probably do it like this. And it was student biographies. Students would write a little bit about themselves, and then they were going to, going to insert a picture of themselves on the top of the biography. It looks a little like this. So that's one. And actually, he changed it. Ray's pretty flexible. He's a good guy, and, and he's, uh, we decided, actually, what he, we, we talked about this, and then we decided to, then he's decided, no, he wanted to do resumes. So we wrote the lesson for le resumes together, and then, he dis then in the middle of that lesson, he realized that it wasn't going to be possible, and he switched back to this. So it was pretty, he was pretty light on his feet there in the, in the middle of that lesson. <laughs> My role as a mentor with Ray was a little different, you know, still the cheerleader guy, but more of a teacher. He needed to learn how to use Word. He didn't, he didn't know how to do a lot of things. So I needed to teach him more about computer skills. And he's a very quick study, so he picked up a lot on his own and went way past whatever I taught him. But I was also a little more of a coach. Ray, is a, is, um, he's your basic 38-year-old teenager in a lot of ways. You know? <laughs> he's a great guy, but he's, he's loose. And so you need to kind of keep him focused, and that's kind of what I did there. And then the resource guy. And this is how it looked. This is his first lesson, kind of what he's doing. So he's got two computers, and then there's somebody working on one that's hooked up to a Toshiba. Yeah. So we saw that that was a problem, and we fixed it. And then it started to look like this. Now, who is Finn? Can she copy yours? No, no, no. Is he scared? No. And these are the students' responses. Of course, these are level one people, so I couldn't really interview them uh, as such. So I asked Ray kind of what his perceptions were. And this was his perceptions of how the students reacted. He says, the students were initially intimidated, but once the volunteers did theirs, in other words, he had volunteers come up to practice this, and once they did theirs, whoops, excuse me, it became a process of learning, practicing, doing, teaching. So they just got into the, to the routine of it. Soon it became a part of the normal classroom environment. And students really got a kick out of it when they saw their pictures on the paper with their words. It was like, wow, I haven't seen this before. And I chose this guy because he's very excitable, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very excitable man. And then there's one, pr I'll show you one present. Then they got up and made the presentations. Okay, next up is Zay Yang. Zay, come on up. Give him a big hand. <laughs> This is uh, Stockton, California, mid-mile, 
my first my first favorite favorite to be is soccer his soccer I I in the future the, the future I first to be in a police office 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 okay thank you very much Oh, and Ray's response, this was kind of the kinds of things he was saying. This is how he felt at the end of the year. I he felt like he had the whole world. He was just, he was the rookie, you know, and everybody kind of dumped on him a little bit this year. So, um, but I remember talking to Marion at one of our sessions about this. And she said, oh, you'll be lucky if you get it done. I don't know if you remember telling me that. And I said, oh, you're, that's not nuts. We'll easily get it done. Well, it was, you're, you were right. It took a long, long time. And I don't think either one of us expected that. What I learned, well, I don't know, I'm just getting older or what, but I seem to keep learning the same lessons over and over again. <laughs> so, and I've got them here. I'm just gonna read them if you don't mind. Uh, be aware of what else is going on in your mentees' lives. Like with Ray, he just had a lot of stuff going on and I felt like sometimes I was pushing him, but that it wasn't a good idea probably. I should have let off a little bit. Um, be flexible about projects, goals, meeting times. Don't micromanage. Um, and I learned a little bit about making videos, which uh, I obviously have a lot more to learn, but I learned a little bit about it. Uh, next steps for Sylvia. She, she wants to just basically continue what she's doing. She thought it was successful. She wants to continue with it and do a little more, do more to enhance her EL Civics lessons. And the next steps for Ray wants to use PowerPoint, which he'll pick up real quickly, more graphics. And he wants to make it less of a project. I thought the last one was a good comment because he obviously has the right idea, right? Not make it a project, but really make it something that they do all the time. Okay. And these are my acknowledgments. This is uh, the ESL coordinator. She did some of that video. He did video. And he took pictures. And I want to thank, of course, Linda. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.